Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Cassandra Gonzalez. I'm going to be recording a video today um, talking about peace and it just so happens that the video is titled Peace. So I think this is something actually very important to be talking about, especially through these very dark moments that we are dealing with and going through. Um, everyone, not just you know, you know me and my family members, but everyone, this worldwide uh, pandemic of the coronavirus so I believe that this is something essential and vital to be talking about especially in these moments so I'm gonna go ahead and pray if you guys could bow your heads close your eyes and then we can you know join me in prayer Lord I come before you in prayer today in the name of Jesus Christ I thank you because your word promises and says that when two or more are gathered together you are there among them Lord thank you thank you because you are here thank you because this is your place to dwell and abide in thank you because father god you are going to do what you need to do you're going to show up and you're going to show out and lord i just pray that you speak through me god allow me to be rid of myself allow it to be you shining through me allow it to be more of you and less of me god allow me to speak the truth and speak the truth in love father god and provide encouragement and inspiration jesus christ and allow it to be all because of what your word says your word prom because you are the promise maker but also the promise keeper Lord and Lord I trust in you and I believe in you Father God that you are doing and making a way Father God you're healing the sick and Father God you're encouraging those who are discouraged God I pray right now Father God that whatever spirit Father God spirit of fear I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ Father God your word promises it your word says God your word indicates that you have not given us a spirit of fear but of power love and self-control and God I just pray in us Father God being able to cast our petitions before you our cares on to you because you care that you give us that peace father god that surpasses all understanding that you allow us father god to lay our petitions our prayers before you father god and you give us this peace father god that will guard our hearts and will guard our minds i pray father god that right now you fill me up with your spirit and that you just speak through me god and i pray that you just absolutely show up and show out like you said lord and just Touch the hearts of whoever needs to hear this, God, and prepare the hearts of those who need to hear it, God. I pray that, again, this word, Father God, is planted on fertile soil, Jesus Christ. I praise you, my God. I exalt you, my God. I glorify you. I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Father God. I believe that you are almighty. You are sovereign. You are powerful, God. You are omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent, God. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, God. And God, you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, God. And I believe in you. I believe that what is happening, you're aware of it, and you have total and absolute control of it, God. And God, I just pray that you continue to comfort our hearts, continue to give us that soul as Father God, that refuge and that peace once again, Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I praise you, God. I exalt you, God. I glorify you, God. Give us a hunger for your word, a thirst for your word, a passion of fire, Father God. Allow us to walk in that authority and that power that you've given to us, Lord. In your blessed, precious name, I pray. And Lord, I also pray that in the midst of this, God, that you set us on fire, Jesus Christ. Allow us to be that salt and the light to be able to speak about you in the midst of this chaos, God. Allow you, Christ, to be glorified in the midst of this chaos, God, in the midst of this conflict. Thank you, Jesus Christ, because I know I know that we can we can use this to glorify you, God. And I ask that you help us to do just that. Give us wisdom, Father God. Your word says that anyone who asks is for wisdom, you'll give it to them without reproach. Give us wisdom on how to go about, Father God, speaking about you in the midst of this conflict. Allow us to be able to provide heal our hope, Father God, as well. Pray for healing for the sick, Father God. Allow us to be able to provide encouragement, Lord, and inspiration and just for people to know that there is someone that loves them and cares about them and wants their heart, Lord. Give us a heart for your lost, Father God. Give us a heart for the broken, a heart for the sick, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Or I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, um, and talk about peace. So, um, in Matthew, it talks about building your house on the rock, right? And so... I'm going to actually right now build a foundation, lay a foundation down. And laying the foundation down and laying a good foundation down, you actually can go ahead and build it up, right? Build from it up. And so my intent and my purpose is to lay a foundation down so I can go ahead and talk about what peace is. Because peace is beyond just what it is that you and I believe it is um, that God can offer us, which he can, but it's beyond that. Okay, so I'm going to lay the foundation down about peace and then I'm obviously going to build up from there. So let's go ahead and let's let's get started on this. Uh, so peace. 
Okay, so peace is, uh, what is it? It's actually a term used in different ses senses in scripture. Meaning, I'm going to give examples so I can elaborate. Peace is a fruit of the spirit. That's one example, right? Peace is also um, used as a means of saying goodbye. Um, or like, you know, peace be with you type of thing. Peace is a name that Jesus Christ can be identified as, which is the Prince of Peace, right? Peace is an effect of righteousness. Peace is also something that the wicked do not have. Peace, we, we, we're able to have peace with God because we are justified by faith through Jesus Christ. Uh, another thing, peace is something that we are to be seeking and to, to be pursuing. And I love this one. I love this one. This is, I think, what inspired me to study about peace. So, peace is actually a command that Jesus had given in the book of Mark, chapter 4, I believe. He had given the storms to be, to, to be at peace and be still, right? And so, he was actually sleeping. They were traveling to the other side of town, and he was sleeping. In the sleeping shows his humanness and also his need to rest, but it also does not take away that he was still God, right? Nevertheless, so what I'm trying to get at is that this is what inspired me to study about what, you know, peace. So Jesus, you know, arose from his sleep and he said, peace, be still. And he said it to the storms and the storms obeyed him. The waves obeyed him. The, the winds obeyed him. And so may that speak to you that the command that Jesus gave to, those, to, the, to that storm is also the command that God gives to your storms that you may be enduring and dealing through, okay? Um, that I also am enduring and dealing through some storms. Uh, another thing is that peace is actually reinforcement that Jesus had given to uh, the people. Uh, for instance, the people that he healed from illnesses, he told them to go in peace. People that he delivered from demons also, uh, and as well as anyone that he had forgiven from their sins, he told them to go in peace, right? And so another thing is uh, peace is actually an instruction to live by, act in, and abide by. So I, I, I laid down the foundation of what peace is in many different senses right in scripture, which is really interesting. You can obviously look into it and whatnot, but um, peace is not limited to just one thing. You get what I'm saying? Uh, so with that being said, God is actually a provider and a comforter and God is actually the provider of peace to bring us comfort. So now we're going to get into that as far as peace in that sense. Okay. So in modern day use, modern day use, I'm emphasizing on that. I think that's important. In modern day use, people believe that peace is actually the absence of tension or conflict. Let me emphasize that's in modern day use. I did not say biblical use. In biblical use, however, though, peace is actually uh, a condition of well-being that God grants to his people. I'm going to go ahead and share with you the Hebrew word for peace, which is shalom. It means peace. It means health. It means, you know, wellness, uh, wholeness. Now let's talk about what peace is not, okay? So that in order for us to understand what peace is, we have to know what it is not. So peace is the, uh, the opposite of peace, which many of you know, many, some people don't, that's why I'm going to talk about it, is peace, uh, the opposite of peace is distress, it is worry, it is anxiety, it is agitation, your frustration, being upset. So if you're feeling these things, you obviously are not feeling peace, right? That's what that's telling me. So if at any given moment you're not feeling, you know, you're, if you're feeling anxiety or worry, which it's a normal human thing to feel, but that shows me that you're not feeling peace, okay? So, um, but I want to go ahead and talk about this. I want to elaborate. <laughs> with this whole chaos going on the, with the coronavirus, it is, it is very much still possible for us to have peace in the midst of this conflict, in the midst of this chaos, in the midst of this coronavirus, in the midst of this worldwide pandemic, we are still able to have peace, okay? So let me go ahead and elaborate on that. Peace is actually not contingent to how good things are going for us. We don't think as how the world thinks, right? 
the way that the we are in this world but not of this world the way that modern day use believes that peace is remember it's that it's the absence of tension or conflict nevertheless though we're not seeing it from modern day use we're seeing it from a biblical use from what the bible says the holy word of god right because he is the word and so let me go ahead and rephrase that so that I could, I'm repeating it because I believe that it's, it has of great value and great importance. Peace is not contingent, meaning it does not depend upon how good things are going for you. I'm going to go ahead and give you, I'm going to get a little bit personal, but I'm going to go ahead and give you an example. In some of the most darkest moments that I have ever experienced in my life, I have felt the most the peace of God, okay? I'm going to name one, and then I'm going to get into the one where it really, 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 like, allowed me to grasp what peace, the peace of God. The first one is that I was, some of you do know, some of you don't know, I was actually engaged to get married, and um, obviously it's a broken engagement, not with the individual or whatnot, but nevertheless, so when things were ending between I, myself, and the other individual, um, it hurt. It really hurt, and I clearly remember these tears streaming down my face, and I was crying, and I was crying. I was, like, sobbing, you know what I'm saying? Like, the type that hurts your head, and your eyes are red, and you just got sniffles and mocos and all of that, right? And I was crying so much because this was a person that I loved that, I, that we were planning our wedding. Like, we were, we were planning on getting married, and it came to a point where, obviously, it ended, right? And in that, like, I remember feeling peace. Like, I remember the tears were still streaming down my face. And I was looking out my window of my car because I was still, like, you know, I was just kind of like, I parked, I pulled over. And I was, like, feeling peace. Didn't take away that I was still hurting, but I still felt that peace. So that was one of the darkest moments that I had experienced. But then the other one is my brother. Many of you do know because you've watched videos or, you know, I don't know, my Instagram. My brother, um, my brother passed. My brother was actually, um, his life was taken from us. Um, And it was a, a very evil crime that was done. And I clearly remember that day when it is that the detectives came to my house. I a long story but nevertheless though when they told us what had happened it's like the depiction in the movies is fairly accurate but you can never think that you would experience that you know what I mean like it just is something I was in shock I was numb I was in denial I was like I was so confused but I can tell you right now that in those moments when I felt the most absolute pain of my entire life, of knowing that my brother had been taken from me. I also felt the most peace from God. I remember that same night, because I could not sleep alone. Um, I could not sleep alone for, I would say like a good good two months after it is that that had happened. I remember that same night, and I had to sleep with a night. It was was just something like crazy. I had to sleep with someone, um, with my younger sibling, and I remember like writing down in my journal and I, and I, I had peace, but I, I, I continued to ask God for peace for, because I knew what was to come because obviously in knowing that they passed it, you're going to end up having, you know, burial, bur- bur- burial, I think that you said that right. Um, you're going, you know, all of that, like the funeral, all of that. So I asked for peace and it did not take away how much pain I felt, but it did definitely, I knew that I felt peace. And uh, another one, uh, you know, some of the darkest moments that I've experienced is, like, my father has been diagnosed with cancer three separate times. And in knowing that and hearing that, like, the doctors or, you know, it hurts. It hurts so much. But you have this peace. Like, you're still crying. You're still hurting. You're still in pain. And you still have this sorrow and this, you know, just, like, this grief. But there's something about knowing that you believe in the God 
the Most High God, the one who created the heavens and the earth, and that He has total and absolute control. And you have this peace that really you cannot understand. People around you can't understand. Like, why are you okay right now? I don't know. I myself don't know. All I know is that this is from God. I did not wear waterproof mascara. But I did pray before I did this video, and I did say, Lord, let me be vulnerable. Because um, I believe that there's vulnerability uh, there's authenticity and vulnerability and um, genuine. Got tears all over my shirt. Um, so what I'm trying to get at, though, is in some of the most darkest moments that I have found myself in in my life, some of the pains that I felt, these sorrows, these afflictions, these these moments of like, oh, my gosh, I have experienced the peace of God. And so that in itself, what I'm trying to say is don't limit God to how good things are going because God can give you a peace no matter how bad things are going, okay? Uh, so that's what I wanted to touch on. Um, I'm going to read two scriptures. Let's go to John chapter 14, verse 27. Um, give me a second. I have to find it. So John chapter 14, verse 27. Uh, okay, so it says, Peace I leave with you. Uh, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So that's, look at how beautiful my Bible is. Oh, that's my brother and I. Um, so, anyways, uh, let me go ahead and actually talk about that. Break that down and be able to elaborate, right? So, the peace that Christ gives banishes fear and dread from the heart. He gives us this peace of mind and also a peace of heart. And this is something that, like I said, modern day youth, this is something that the world cannot offer ever. And it never will. And believe me, the world cannot understand this peace because it, it, it doesn't come from the world. It comes from Jesus Christ. So this peace that Christ offers is to actually keep us calm in every circumstance and to give us courage and strength for every single challenge that we may face or we may find ourselves enduring, right? So I also want to read um, John chapter 16, verse 33. And I clearly remember when, I, um, when it was my uh, brother's funeral, I remember reading this scripture. And this scripture really, like, because I did a, I spoke. I think it's called, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's called eulogy. Remember, I'm bilingual, so <laughs> some of the words I, um, John chapter 16 verse 33 so this is actually the scripture the scripture that i had read like i was saying at his funeral okay and so it kind of ties in with john chapter 14 verse 27 which is really you know it's kind of like there's a concordance there um anyways it is i have said these things to you that in me you may have peace in the world you will have tribulation but take heart i have overcome the world uh, I am going to be also putting the scripture. I think I'm putting them right here. I, I'm creating that custom or that habit of putting the scripture so I can help. And so, anyways. Um, so, tribulations actually means pressure or afflictions or distress, right? And um, it tells us to be of good cheer, uh, which means being confident and courageous. Uh, when we place our trust in God, he can give us his peace of mind in the midst of the pressure. And here, Jesus is actually telling the disciples that everything that has been taught to them is so that the peace that is in him will also be in us. Uh, we can rest in that. We can rest in a peace, in that peace. So he's also telling us to be confident, unshakable, to be assured, to be encouraged, to be filled with joy, and to be undaunted. And I want to read Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. I have... This scripture and another scripture. And then I will continue to elaborate. Okay. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in prayer. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart 
hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay? So, I'm going to just hold my Bible here. <laughs> uh, okay. My notebook. So, anyway. So, it says about... Um, let, 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 let's just talk about what the scripture is saying. The, 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 the scripture is actually saying, right? It's saying, pray about... Pray about the circumstances instead of worrying about them. He is saying, you know, like, in, in, by prayer and with petition and supplication, make your requests be made known to God and give thanks already because, you know, you believe. And the Word of God says, uh, anything that you ask in my name and according to my will, it shall be done. So you give thanks in that belief, in that hope, right? Because hope is a belief of things um, hoped for but not yet seen. And so you give things in that hope and that belief that it will come to pass. Does that make sense? So anyways, it's telling you to pray about the circumstances instead of worrying about them. And in First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it talks about cast your cares onto him because he cares. And God genuinely cares about each and every single care that you have. And so we are to cast our cares onto him and lay those cares, once we've cast it onto them, lay them onto him. And if you need to continue to like, you know, um, don't pick it back up. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, if you're still feeling worried, if you're still feeling distress, distress or anxiety, continue to pray. But, you know, like, don't put that burden back on you, but rather lay it, lay it down at the feet of Jesus. Right. That's what he's calling us to do. Uh, so in that prayer, in that petition, in that supplication and in giving that thanks, he's going to give us this peace that surpasses all understanding. That is going to guard your heart and is going to guard your mind. So let me go ahead and elaborate. OK, so in turning your petitions to him. It's it's amazing because God acknowledges in hearing your petitions and hearing your prayers and hearing your supplications that in turn, you know, you may not see something happening in the spiritual, right? Or, or I'm sorry, in, in the in the physical, but in the spiritual, something is happening. Something is 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 taking place because there is power in prayer, and in so and so in praying and you laying that before God, He He acknowledges your petition, and it's kind of like Him saying, like, baby girl. Right. Or, you know, look, son, I acknowledge what you have said. I'm going to give you this peace while it is that I take care and I handle what it is that you have laid down before me. Because God is a good God. He takes care of his children. Right. He's not going to leave us nor abandon us. He, he is going to bring us that comfort. He's a provider. He's a comfort. He is a peace. Uh, he, I'm sorry. He's a promise maker, but also promise keeper. So you're, you and I are not alone. Though it may seem like where is God in all of this? Believe me, God has known from the very beginning this was going to happen. He knows, he, he knew even before it took place that it was going to happen. And he has control, right? So what I'm trying to get at is that um, in praying, in having that petition, in supplicating, in giving that things, he's going to give us this peace that we, you and I cannot under, even begin to understand. Um, other people are going to be like, why are you okay? Why are you feeling this peace that, you know, I, I want in on that. And that's when it is that. You could be that fisher of men. You can, hey, you know what? Let me tell you about my God. Let me tell you about my, you know, the God that I serve. Like, he's given me this peace. That was definitely not on my notes, so <laughs> I hope that that speaks. But um, anyways, um, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, right? It, that whole Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34, and I did a study about it before. It's Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, right? It's talking about how it is that, um, we're not to worry about the food we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, or the clothes we're going to wear. Because if God takes care of the, the sparrows in the barn, he can takes care of the lilies in the field. He's going to take care of you and I, right? And so, um, and he also tells us, do not, he tells us, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow has enough worries of its own. And so, in, in praying, in bringing that before God, you are obeying this command that he has given us to not worry about other things right because tomorrow is going to have enough worries let's just focus on today live today before him boom right and so i want to talk about this man that i really look up to uh his name is paul in the bible <laughs> i'm gonna hold on. i think i'm gonna go past 30 but it's okay so Paul is actually, I want to talk to you about Paul because we just read Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7, right? But Paul is actually the author of the book of Philippians. And so Paul is actually, he at one point was a persecutor of the church to now he is a pursuer of the church. And so Paul actually endured a lot of things for the cause of Christ. He was beaten, he was in prison, and he was, you know, this letter, as he was writing this letter to the church of Philippi, he was actually in prison. 
So, and, and the cool thing um, is, not cool thing, but, you know, I love that it is that this letter uh, that was written is a substitute because he would, I'm sure he much would have rather preferred to visit in person, but because he was, you know, in prison, this letter was a substitute for that, you know, personal visit that he was going to pay to the Church of Philippi. Um, and so, let me talk about Paul, and he was in prison. <laughs> he was in prison and writing about this letter. The book of Philippians is four chapters. Read it. It's not that long, but the, the attitude of Paul, the concept, the, just, just, just read it, please. So, let me explain to you. Let me give a background because I love, I love that, right? I, I believe that the details matter. So, he was actually confined to a lodge, and he was shackled to one of the soldiers, he was allowed, he was, he was guarded in four hour shifts. So the soldiers, you know, kind of alternated, but he was free to receive visits and to talk to them about the gospel. So this is what it is that I love that, um, though it is that Paul endured much, he had known to be content in all things. The letter to the Philippians is a testimony of his attitude of joy, right? And so his joy in serving Jesus so Paul learned and recognized opportunities to share the gospel, even in apparent setbacks. This coronavirus is a setback, right, for a lot of us. A lot of us have to stay at home because, I mean, we all have to because, you know, it's a command that has been given. But uh, because of our kids, because of work, because of this, you know, like just in itself, like this coronavirus, many people can see it as a setback, which in, in, in a way it kind of is, right? But in the midst of those moments... Paul recognized this is an opportunity to be able to talk about joy, to be able to talk about God, to be able to talk about the gospel, to be able to share it, to expand it, his kingdom, his church, right? And so in these setbacks, we're able to actually talk about the gospel, which further expands the kingdom of God. And so in the midst of this coronavirus, that's what we're able to do. Let's recognize it as what Paul recognized his setbacks as, right? Um, nevertheless, though, Paul, uh, the joy of Paul is that he saw God working through difficult situations that he faced. You and I may be facing difficult situations beyond just a coronavirus, right? You may have a loved one that is ill. You may have financial strains, you know, just so many things. But in the midst of it all, learn, we need to learn to find joy in these difficult situations. So I do want to go ahead and continue explaining that. We have to understand that Paul is actually in prison, and when you're in prison, it's not, it's not a timeout. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's prison. So either one of two things, you're either one of two things, you're either going to be executed, or you're going to be released. And Paul is writing this letter to the church of Philippi and talking about joy, and peace. In this moment, when he can easily be executed, and yes, I mean it did come to happen where that did take place but in this letter like I just love it um th that that didn't stop him of what could potentially happen from sharing the gospel and may it not stop us either uh so let me go ahead and actually read Philippians chapter 4 verse 11 through 13 and then this is the last scripture uh okay not that I am speaking of being in need for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger abundance and need I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me so this is actually a scripture that is actually very misused but we are going to explain it so it's no longer misused uh, here Paul is talking about that he learned in every situation to be content so I'm going to use this coronavirus again as an example. Many of us here have to stay home, some of us because of our kids, you know, things like that. But um, we very much like Paul have to learn to be content in every situation. So in this lockdown, we need to find that joy because only we, it only can it be found in Christ. So uh, we're in like a lockdown and we're like, man, we're limited on going out and things like that. Paul was locked up, and he still found that contentment and that satisfaction. We know that eventually this is going to end. This is temporary. Paul's situation, he didn't know if it was temporary, if it was permanent. We didn't know, right? And so if he was able to talk and find, like, 
talk about peace and things like that in those moments definitely uh, and joy and contentment and satisfaction definitely we can so Paul he knew how he knew um, he knew how to be brought low and how to abound like he he knew that his satisfaction regardless if it is that he was brought low if he had a little or if he had a lot he knew at the end of the day it didn't matter it don't matter if I got a lot it don't matter if I have a little bit the fact of the matter is is that I know where my contentment my satisfaction comes in comes from and so in in it all Paul has learned the secret of contentment which is either facing the plenty or facing hunger abundance and need anything that God calls us to he will strengthen us and so God was obviously calling Paul to be a speaker a teacher uh, uh, an apostle of the word of God right and in doing so it it's something difficult it's not something easy and in that though and what God calls us to do it's not going to always be like a straight shot of like, yes, we made it. Like we've done, you know, we finished the race. It's going to be up and down and it's going to be, it's never going to be smooth sailing, right? But the fact of the matter is whatever God calls you to do, he's, he's going to give you the strength to bring, to, to fulfill that purpose, that mission, right? Many people use, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and apply it to a, such as like physical strength. Um, like, oh, I can, you know, do another set or another rep or, yeah, do another set. Um, but it, it, it's, it's not that. It's in the, in the mission field. It's in the working for Christ, right? And so whatever, whatever he has or wherever he find, finds himself, uh, Paul, he knew he could do all things for Christ who strengthens him. So the secret of facing life, and I'm going to leave you with this, is that anything that God calls us to do, he's going to strengthen and empower us to be able to fulfill his purpose, whether it's in having abundance or being in need. We need to imitate this attitude that, that Paul had, and he had that joy and that peace. So I love, <laughs> I just threw it on my bed. Um, I love that book. I recommend you read it. I recommend you check it out. I know that I kind of, you know, fled through this, but I believe that I got through all of what it is that I wanted to get through. I laid down the foundation. I talked about it. But the, the fact of the matter is, though, is that God is so good that he can give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. So in these moments, just take a second to pray, to lay it before God, you know, your petitions, your cares, your concerns, your, with supplication, give him things and knowing and believing and having hope that he is going to bring it to pass. And he's going to give you that peace, right? Um, do we know what's going to happen tomorrow? We don't know. But the Bible also tells us to not worry about tomorrow, right? Because it, it, today has enough worries of its own. And so, plus you can't add another hour to your life by worrying. If anything, it takes away from it. It consumes you alive. So, um... I know that no matter what happens, it's going to be okay because I firsthand have witnessed how painful things have been for me. Um, and I know other people also have experienced painful things, but the fact of the matter is, oh, I, I have experienced firsthand that peace in some of the darkest moments of my life to where evidently you can still see I still mourn I still grieve I still cry because it still hurts but it doesn't take away that peace right and so I just want to leave you with that I'm gonna pray and then yep that's it um bow your heads thank you father god for and close your eyes <laughs> thank you father god for this message thank you father god for this teaching thank you father god for this encouraging word father god I praise you, I exalt you, and I glorify you, God. I lift up your name on high. You are worthy and deserving of all praise, of all honor, of all glory, of all exaltation. You are amazing in all of your ways. You are incredible, God. You are, you are infinite. You are eternal, God. You are loving. You are merciful. You are gracious. You are kind, God. You are sovereign. You are mutable, God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because we can have that faith, we can have that hope, we can have that belief, that trust in you, God, that you will give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. Allow us to have that encouragement, God. Allow us to desire to pray. Allow us to desire to lay things down before you and not carry that burden, Father God, but rather laying it down at your feet, Father God, knowing and believing that you are going to give us that peace, God, that surpasses all understanding. That is going to guard our hearts and guard our minds, God. I pray right now in the midst of this chaos, God, that... You allow us to absolutely, Father God, exalt your name, lift up your name on high, and bring, Father God, your glory in the midst of this chaos, this conflict with the coronavirus. I bless you, God. I exalt you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, 
that you fill us up with this fire, fill us up with this hunger, fill us up with this thirst. Allow us to do, Father God, whatever it is that, in all that we do, Father God, whatever it is that we eat or drink, Father God, we do it for the glory of yours. And I just pray, God, that you allow us to every single person that we see, allow them, us to see them as an opportunity uh, to speak about you, God, the God that we serve. Thank you, Father God, because we have that Bible. We have we have the Bible, that, that instruction, God, that that ability to be able to read and reference your word, knowing that it is alive and active, Father God, that is sharper than a two-edged sword, that it can provide us with that, Father God, to be able to say and know, if Paul went through this, I can also as well. And so, Lord, just thank you. Allow us to more than ever be united as a church as a body of christ to be able to you know help one another out lord i thank you god i bless you god i exalt you and god anyone that does not know you may this may, may you stir within them father god a desire to want to get to know you god i pray that you mess with anyone in ways they cannot ignore um allow them to draw them in father god with your with your cords of love jesus and and just allow us to be your hands and your feet to be able to draw people closer and near to you lord in your blessed name i pray amen so it's a little bit longer it's okay i'm not gonna put a limit on the holy spirit um so i'm excited uh, that i did this video i'm learning so much i hope you guys learned and i i love you guys so much <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and say good night i'm gonna be uploading another video as well soon within this week um and so i have uh i have a i have a pretty cool addition or you know youtube video that i have planned for friday the third so anyways god bless you guys if you have any questions if you have any prayers if you have any petitions absolutely send them my way i will be praying for you okay god bless guys have a good night